Dr. Clement, what is the best source of omega-3? Where do you get the best omega-3? You get it from germinated seeds, nuts, grains, and beef, all which inherently and easily have fats in it and oil in it. The great news is when you take those fats, they already, through germination and sprouting, break down to fatty acids. Unlike what you buy in a bottle called hemp, it's not a fatty acid at that point. It still has to spend hours of work and energy for your body to convert it over to a usable fuel for what? The mitochondria of the cell, which is the brain of the cell. Whereas in sprouting, it's already done for you. The fats are already broken to usable fatty acid. Instant fuel for the cell. And yes, if you then say, I want more because I'm a real thinker or I'm a major athlete, and I would promote that, by the way, then you would be taking hemp, you would be taking flax, you would be taking walnut, you would be taking avocado, etc. But if you're drinking green drinks, you're getting a lot of fatty acids, providing you put what in them? <coughs> no, you put sprouts, again going back to what the first thing I said, and the sprout that's in every green drink with its religion, the sunflower. A major, major good source of that. But again, every sprout. You can buy what I use at home is I take flax that's sprouting and ground up, and I throw that on my salad. That's better than the oil. To be honest, it does, it's not as volatile either. It doesn't go bad. I've been buying seeds up, but that's not the same thing. You told us the benefit of the water the seeds. Exactly, where you germinate it. You know, we all go, they're becoming widely available. So when you go out to buy the flax seed, as an example, look and you'll see sprouted flax. And then grind it, because flax is almost impossible to digest. That's why Anna Maria has you soak it here, and then drink what's out of that. You get the benefit that way. Yes. Oh. How do I pick up attractive young girls? I can't believe you asked this question. <laughs> He's asking why we grow the wheatgrass under full spectrum lighting out of there. Uh, we had a very big learning curve. When we left Boston, we literally grew this in a basement uh, that looked like a dungeon. And we learned about full spectrum lights. We came to Florida and we had too much sun. Now, you've got a picture of sprouts as being infants that were born on August the 15th. The last thing you would do is take the baby out 12 o'clock in the afternoon, August 15th. And so we've got to put it in shaded areas and under controlled light. Again, the greenhouse gets a massive amounts of UV rays from the sun in it. But to keep control over it, we do that. And it works well. <laughs>